All right. So continuing from our discussions last week and the week before about rectification, now we need to start learning about how to smooth this signal that we ended up with. It's pretty important that we get a line here instead of a series of bumps because you can damage circuitry if you try to feed it this and try to convince it that it's direct current voltage. So how do we do that? Well, the easiest way is to add a capacitor in uh, parallel with the output voltage. And ideally, when we put that capacitor into the circuit, we're just going to have a straight line. But in reality, what we're going to end up with, and uh, let's see, is something that looks a little bit like uh, this. It's going to drip off and then it's going to come back up and it's drip off and then come back up and then drip off. Sort of like that. And the reason it looks like that is because during this half of the waveform the capacitor is going to charge up. And then as the waveform goes back down that capacitor is going to discharge trying to maintain that voltage. And then the waveform is going to come back up and that capacitor is going to charge up and so on and so forth. Now <clears throat> most people will just take a great big capacitor and throw it in parallel and call it good. And, oops, and that's perfectly fine. But if you want to save some money or try to get everything into as compact a package as possible, you can uh, do a calculation to figure out what the ideal um, capacitor is going to be. So that equation is the load times the capacitance in farads and you're going to want that value to be greater than 1 over the frequency. So let's <clears throat> throw some values out there. So I've actually got for our demonstration a little bit later a 4.7k resistor And that's going to be multiplied times C, because we're actually solving for C. And let's say just uh, greater than or equal to 1 over the frequency of the circuit, which in this case, remember, we doubled the frequency in a full wave rectifier. So it's going to be 1 over 120. So let's get out a calculator here and go 1 over 120 equals <clears throat> 0 0.0083 and then 4700 times C equals that. So we'll divide both sides by, oops, I'm going way off screen here. Let's shift this up. There we go. So we'll divide both sides by 4700. Divide it by 4700. And we get uh, 1.773 times 10 to the negative sixth. So that's going to be 1.773 microfarads right? Times 3 is million. Yeah, micro. So basically 1.7 microfarads is going to be the capacitor that we're going to want for a load of 4.7k. So let's go ahead and mess around with this in a practical demonstration. That'll be a quick jump cut here while I set up for the experiment. All right, we're back and we're, it's time to start experimenting. So I couldn't find a 1.7 microfarad capacitor, but I was able to find this 2.2, which is reasonably close enough. So let's go ahead and put the cap 
Um, actually, I'm gonna re rejigger things a little bit here. Make it a little bit easier. There we go. So let's go ahead and throw this capacitor in there. Now you'll notice that we now have a nice flat line. Let's make that go away. There we go. So what happens if we apply a load? All of a sudden we have actually a really bad ripple. So we're at uh, times one on that, times one on the scope. So we're looking at a two, what about a two volt ripple there? So clearly our calculation wasn't that great. But then again, the calculation does say that the capacitor value has to be greater than the sum that we came up with. So instead of 2.2 microfarads, let's try 10 micro. You can see we've got now a waveform that looks a little bit more like what I described earlier. And our peak to peak on that is uh, 0.6 volts. So that's a lot better. Let's go back and have a look at our peak to peak voltage on the 2.2 mic. So our peak to peak voltage on that was about two volts. All right, well, let's increase it even more. So we tried 10, let's try 22. And then we've got barely any rip at all. What do we have here? About 0.36 volts peak to peak? Let's go higher. How about, uh, let's see, 220 mic. Big, big can of a capacitor here. And then our peak to peak voltage on that is basically a tenth of a volt. And just for fun, Let's go smaller. Let's go um, one mic. Then we've got a 2.8 volts peak to peak. Let's go even smaller to 0.22 mic. Then there's basically no smoothing at all at that point. It just brings those peaks up a little bit. I really wish, let's see, can we, there we go. But then we have to, oh, that doesn't really work. Yeah, you can see there's basically any change in the waveform there. Now just for fun, let's go even smaller. Let's go to 2.2 nanofarads. That was supposed to be 22 nanofarads, but whatever. Let's put that little tiny thing across it, see what happens. Basically nothing. But what happens if we remove the load? All of a sudden, it starts to smooth out again. So that's just a little bit of a, a primer into uh, rectification there. Or not rectification, but uh, smoothing of rectification. Well, you can do math Typically, and it's pretty standard, you'll find a 220 microfarad capacitor in a non-regulated transformer style voltage, uh, voltage supply. Uh, but they really don't do that anymore because electronics are pretty sensitive. And the more of a load you put across it, the more ripple you have and the more chance you have to damage your equipment. So that actually doesn't really seem to bother with a 4.7 ohm, or 4.7k. Um, let's put a 
1k resistor across that. Let's see what happens. All of a sudden, we've got ripple again, even with a big capacitor. So, filtering a rectified DC signal is a lot more complicated than just throwing a capacitor in. Of course, the bigger the capacitor, the better, but you also have to figure in the load that you'll, you'll have. Especially if you have a dynamic load, you want to make sure that the capacitor can handle the maximum load. And of course, that ripple is caused by the capacitor discharging during the off cycle of the waveform. So the bigger the capacitor you have, the more reservoir you have, and the more current you can supply when the waveform is in its off stage. Anyway, I hope that helped you understand ripple a little bit better. If you have any questions, ask in the comments below. If you haven't already, consider clicking here to subscribe. Right over here will be a video that YouTube thinks you'll find interesting. Right here will be the Back to Basics playlist. And right here will be the um, Patreon link that you can use to support further videos like this one. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.